Welcome to this LibreOffice Calc lesson on absolute and relative references. In this table of sales figures, I need the totals for each product. I can write a different formula for each product total using the sum ifs function, like I have in previous lessons. There's a much better way, though. I can use one formula that makes use of absolute and relative cell references. Then I can use the fill handle to drag the formula down and copy it to all the product totals. Here's an example that demonstrates the concept. I'm building a table which multiplies the values in A2 by these numbers. First, into B5, type equals, click cell A2, then add the multiplication operator, an asterisk, Click cell B4 and press Enter. I could copy the formula to other cells by using the fill handle and moving it across to F5. When I do this, it doesn't work. And if I double click on C5, I can see why. When the formula was copied, the reference to the column in cell A2 moved with the formula because it's a relative reference. So now it reads B2. There's nothing in B2, so the answer is 0. 0 times 2. The way to prevent this is to make the reference to the column in A2 an absolute reference, which locks the column in place so it doesn't move when the formula is copied with the fill handle. You do this by placing a dollar sign before the column reference. So I double click on B5 and type a dollar sign before the A. Press Enter, then drag the fill handle across to cell F5, and now it works like it should. Double-click cell F5, and you can see the reference to the column in A2 has stayed the same. It's absolute, and the other column reference in the formula has moved to F. Click Escape to go out of edit mode. If I make a similar table with rows instead of columns, the absolute reference needs to be on the row rather than the column. In this example, I type equals into C7, then click A2 to add it to the formula. Now the reference to A2 needs to be an absolute row reference. There's a shortcut for doing this instead of typing the dollar sign yourself. By pressing Shift and F4, it will toggle through all the combinations, row and column locked, row locked, column locked, and no lock. So here I press Shift and F4 twice to lock the row. Now type an asterisk to multiply, then click cell B7. This needs to be a relative reference, so no lock is needed here. Press Enter. Click in cell C7 again, Drag the fill handle down to C11. In these examples, I could have locked both the row and the column for the reference in A2. They both would still work because the formula is moving either down or across, not both ways. So I could have just pressed Shift F4 once when I created the formulas. Now back to the table of sales figures. To get my list of product totals, I'll be using a combination of absolute and relative references. First click cell B13 and type equals, sum ifs, press enter. Drag and highlight the range of cells to add, C2 to C10 in this case. This range needs to be locked, so the values don't move when the formula is copied down. So press Shift F4. Now type a comma. For the criteria range, we need the product column. Drag and highlight A2 to A10. This range also needs to be locked, so press Shift F4. Type a comma. Next parameter is the criteria, which is the product in cell A13. The reference to this needs to change as it's moved down the list of products, so no lock here. Press Enter. Click A13 again, and you can either double-click on the fill handle or drag it down to B17. 
double click B17 to reveal the formula and notice that the ranges didn't change but the final parameter row reference changed as the formula was copied down. Here's an example of a multiplication table where the cell references really need to be either row locked or column locked, not both, because the references need to change both down the rows and across the columns. To create the formula for this table, first click into B2 and type equals, click B1 to add it to the formula. Press Shift F4 twice to lock the row. We don't want the reference to row 1 to move down when the formula is copied down. It needs to always refer to row 1. But we do want the column reference to be free to move across the columns to the other numbers. Next type an asterisk for multiplication. Then click cell A2. Now this needs to be column locked because when we copy the formula across, we don't want the reference to the value in column A to move when the formula is copied across. But we do want the row reference to be free to move down the rows. Press Shift F4 three times to lock the column. Now press Enter. Click cell B2 again and drag the fill handle down to B6. Finally, drag the fill handle across to F6, and there's your multiplication table. Double click on F6 and look how the formula has changed. In the first reference, the row was locked and still refers to row 1, but the column reference has moved to F. In the second reference, the column was locked. It still refers to column A, but the row has now moved to 6. Well, that concludes this lesson on absolute and relative, a difficult subject, but with practice and experience, a powerful tool for getting the results you want from Calc spreadsheets. The work file for this lesson is available at panopia.com. As always, thanks for watching. So long for now.